What's up people, this is Prashant Jab as well and thank you for tuning into my channel. Right now, I like I did another recording, another video, science, first science occasion video on the cathode ray experiment in which I derived about the mathematical concept of the cathode ray experiment. And if you're interested in doing more about the cathode ray experiment, you can tune into that video and uh, just view that video. I hope you like it. It will be uploaded soon after this video. So let's move on with what we were discussing and this is atomic structure number three and today we will discuss that how was the charge of charge of the electron discovered and what about the discovery of protons and neutrons which we know as the other subatomic particles. So first of all let us discuss that how the charge of the electron was devised. Well R.M. Millikan was another physicist who, in 18, who lived from 1868 to 1953 and he devised an oil drop experiment in order to de in order to devise the charge of the electron. So what actually was the oil drop experiment was that uh, there was a small beaker like this, right? There's a small beaker like this, and there were two plates on it. So what actually happened was that there are two plates like this. Okay, yeah, there were two plates like this: the cathode and the anode, and there was an atomizer like this. An atomizer is a small device which breaks down particles into very small sizes and because it is a very small size it is called an atomizer. So what actually happening here was that like there was a machine like this here in which there was oil here. Right. So here we had oil. Okay. This is the atomizer. atomizer okay this is the atomizer we have this is the oil we have okay and then uh, these two this is like these two are connected like this this is the positive plate and this is the negative plate right and there was a small window here a small window was constructed through which x-ray was passed okay now x-ray was passed okay x-ray was passed so what is happening here was that uh, another thing that there was a small telescope here so there is a telescope here this is a telescope that we have let me just name it telescope Okay, now uh, what actually was happening here is that oil drops in the form of mist produced by atomizer because we are calling it a mist because they were so small that they could uh, like they could form a mist kind of thing. They were small as a water droplet in a mist. Okay, and they were allowed to enter through tiny hole in that small box which is called the electrical condenser. Okay, so oil particles like this okay like oil particles like this were allowed to come out okay let me just darken the color so you can see it so like this oil particles were coming out okay oil particles started to come out through it and because there is gravity so it is important that these particles fall down right now you don't understand that these were not empty this is this is connected like hole Okay, so this is negative and the positive charge, but they were also perforated, right? The downward was perforated, but in this, there was a small hole only. In the upper one, there was a small hole here. So let me just erase this part, okay? Like, this is a small hole here. This this is small like only the water drop, the oil droplets could pass through it. So that was happening here. So what it did was that the downward motion of the droplets were observed using the telescope which is a micrometer eye so we could easily see the radius like we could easily see the droplets because they were in the, the radius was in range of micrometer so this is a micrometer eye and we could see the droplets and what it did was like he used to control the electrical contact between these two electrodes like uh, these two electrodes um, the voltage between them were controlled in a such a way that he could easily do his measurements. So what he did was, by measuring the rate of fall of the droplets, Millikan was able to measure the mass of the oil droplets. Right. 
uh, the air inside the chamber was ionized by passing a beam of X-ray through it. Right. So ionizing, like, uh, where, because we know that the like by our common sense that these are made of atoms. So when the X-ray was passed, high energy beams were passed. The electrons would come out and they would get ionized. Right. And uh, well, the electric charge and these oil droplets could get charged because of those electrons hitting on them. Right. So when electric charge was con the electric voltage was conducted, they could easily be stopped. They could easily be retarded. They could easily be made faster to fall down and etc. etc. like things. Right. So what he did was that he did different experiments on this thing. Right. He uh, made first made the oil droplet to go fast, like accelerated it, then retarded it, then made it stop and did several kinds of things. And when he did a various type of experiments, he came to understand two things in this. First, he found out the mass by normal mathematical calculations and secondly he also found out uh, found out the the charge of like the charge on these oil droplets was always an integral multiple of the electric charge e so what was e e is like what we're calling by the charge by mass ratio the e was the numerator so he found out that the, on the oil droplets, the charge was always an integral multiple of the electric charge, which is called the quantization of charge. So using this, he found out two things that the mass of the electron, the mass of the electron was 9.1094 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. And he also found out that the charge was 1.6022 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. And he also found out that the uh, charge on anything is an integral multiple of the minimum charge. So he found out first he found out E using calculations as 1.6022 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb where coulomb is the SI unit of charge. He using the E by M ratio then found out the mass of the electron as 9.6022 1094 into 10 raised to the power minus 31 kg and then he also found out that if we have a body like this if I have a body like this okay and it contains some charge then it has to be the charge on this has to be an integral multiple of E where E is this quantity here right so this is called the R.A. Millikan oil drop experiment and whose mathematical concept is also out of a context but it, is, it was more important to understand that what it did was in the experiment. Now let us discuss about the other subatomic particles that we have. The other subatomic particles include the discovery of protons and neutrons which is also very easy to understand because there is, there is a shorter method of understanding protons and neutrons. Now, talking about the discovery of protons, uh, the same cathode ray experiment was done again, but this time in a modified way. In this, what actually happened here was that the particles, like uh, when we had a cathode ray experiment, like we have, uh, we have this same kind of a box that we have in the cathode ray experiment. And what is happening here was that cathode and anode, the cathode ray used to pass through it. So like we have this here and this here. And uh, this is the cathode here. Right, this is the cathode. And uh, this thing here is the anode. Okay, so this is the cathode and the anode. And these are moving in this direction. The blue ones, the fluorescent blue ones are the cathode rays. Now, scientists used another fluorescent kind of a thing scientists used another fluorescent kind of a thing on the back of the cathode and they found out that it glowed again right at certain points it glowed again so what actually happening here was when the ca cathode ray passed through it a certain number of rays also passed through this direction right so if i draw it by violet then there is a there is also certain kind of rays which pass through this direction like this uh, in this direction and these were called the canal rays. Now there were characteristics of the canal rays discovered by this experiment which is as follows. 
that the canal rays, unlike the cathode rays, were positively charged particles and they depended upon the nature of the gas present in the tube. Right. So it was assumed or it was later proved that they were simply the positively charged gaseous ions because we know that the electron is a constituent of the atom. So when cathodes were passed away, the electron starts to uh, like come out of the gaseous electron that way because we have a gas inside. Right. We know that there is a gas inside. Now the gas electrons are coming out. So positively charged nucleus is left and therefore they were positively charged ions. The charge to mass ratio of these particles were found to depend on the gas from which they originate. This was the second uh, like point that has come out. Also, some of the positively charged particles carry a multiple of the fundamental unit of electric charge that is E. 1.6 into 10 raised to the minus 19 coulombs. This was also proved. And the behavior of the particles in the magnetic electric field were opposite to that of electron or cathode. So this was very obvious because we have seen that it is a positively charged particle and thus they were they were exactly opposite to that of electron. Therefore, it can be said that it was a nemesis of electron and it is a positively charged electron. We could say that it is a positively charged electron. So it was said that the smallest and the lightest positive ion was obtained from the hydrogen and was called the proton. So this was the second uh, uh, subatomic particle that was discovered and was called the proton. Right. In 1919, this particle was characterized. Now, after the proton was discovered, scientists felt a need for the presence of an electrically neutral particle as one of the constituent atom. This was because that if there is electron and protons, if there is an electron and a proton, then they would repel each other and to hold down the atom, there must be some other particles. And this particle was discovered in 1932 by Chadwick, James Chadwick, by bombarding a thin sheet of beryllium, was bombarding a thin sheet of beryllium with alpha particles, which we will soon discuss about alpha particles in the Rutherford experiment. So what alpha particles, you can say that certain number of particles and these are bombarded on it and neutrons came out. Right. So this is how neutrons were like made out and because they were neutral particles, they were called neutrons. Thus now we have three specific fundamental particles of any atom. The first one is electron denoted by a symbol of E. We have the electron which is denoted by the symbol of E and has a charge of minus of 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulombs, a relative charge of minus 1 a mass of very le a mass that is very less in comparison to its other constituting atom 9.1 to the minus 31 right now the second one we have is a proton we are denoted by the symbol p we are denoted by the symbol p has a charge of 1.6 plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 into C has a relative charge of plus 1 has a mass of 1.6 into 10 raised to the power minus 27 right which is very 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 big than the, that of the electron and then we have the neutron the neutron having a ha having a symbol N having a charge of 0 relative charge 0 but a mass of 1.67 plus. I'm writing in. Uh, I'm writing plus because it was a little more than that of the proton, right? Into 10 to the power minus 27 in kg. Obviously, the difference between them, the proton and the neutron, uh, like the proton has a like accurate mass of the proton accurate mass is 1.6762. Wait, wait, uh, it's uh, 1.672 uh, into 10 raised to the power minus 27 kg. Whereas for the mass of the neutron, this is the proton, for the mass of the neutron, it is 1.67493 into 10 raised to the power 27, which is not much of a difference if we think about it.